Sheesh. All right, so we are finally back at it and our big goal for today is to get those Porsche wheels on this super beetle. Uh, so what we got, we got a couple different brake kits. Uh, so basically what we have is we have new discs for the front, new drums for the rear. They're gonna match this Porsche bolt pattern. Uh, no dilly dallying, we're gonna get right into things. We're gonna rip off the old wheels, rip off the old brakes, and we'll get right into the new stuff here. Now we already did a front disc brake conversion. So all we need to do is change out the discs and I'm keeping drums on the rear for now. Uh, so on the rear, I just got new drums along with some new shoes and some other hardware just to update those brakes all together here. So let's dive right on in. And in case you're wondering why we're upgrading our wheels here, now these turbo twist wheels off Porsche, first of all, are a really cheap alternative uh, because so many Porsche owners are upgrading to something newer and nicer, like anyone does uh, based off their stock wheels. But also just look at the pure size difference here. So rolling diameter is actually pretty similar as far as our overall diameter of the wheel here, but the big difference is in our width. So I'm not exactly sure what these are stock as far as the wheel, but the actual tire here is a, let's see here. I just want to make sure I get this right. The tire, where is that? You guys will probably see this on here before I do. Here we go. The tire is a 135.15. That is tiny. This is, so what we're going to upgrade to is a 17. Let's see here, a 17 by a 17 by seven on the front. So we're gonna be able to handle turns a lot better here. And also we're gonna be able to get uh, just nicer quality tires with a 15 by four or five, whatever size this is, tires are limited. When we go to a 17 by seven, that's basically a stock tire for a lot of modern cars here. So what we have on here, the, uh, the wheels from what I got from the previous owner are some G4 Super Sports. That's actually what I used to have on my Mustang and my Crown Vic, I believe. Uh, we'll probably upgrade or at least get newer tires down the road, but again, much better tire options than what we have with that little rinky dink uh, 15 incher there. And what we're gonna do from here is just remove that four lug disc and we'll replace it with a five lug alternate. Pretty simple process, we'll pull the, the caliper off, we'll remove the disc here. On the driver's side, I actually have a speedometer cable, so I'll just need to disconnect that and reconnect in part of the process. Uh, but should be really straightforward on the front here. So we almost got the old rotors completely off here. What we have left to do is take these rotors and we need to press in our new bearing races. So each of these rotors have an inner and an outer bearing. So we'll press in the inner and outer race along with our seal. We'll pack the bearings and then get, we'll get them loaded up on the, uh, on the bug here. And that's really all we need to do. All we're really doing is switching out the brake rotors and that's how we actually mount our wheels.
right, so things are actually pr going pretty smooth here. It's a little hard to see, but we got the new, let's see if I can get this for you guys. We got the new rotors on here. Everything went pretty smooth with that. Again, just pressed in the uh, bearing races, put in the new bearings and seals. Uh, now all we need to do is put on our studs. Now something we're doing differently than what the stock setup had is the stock setup had uh, wheel bolts. Uh, and that's pretty common for German cars, but with this, because we're upgrading our rotors and everything, we're going to change to wheel studs, uh, which should make it easier to slide the wheels on and off. And it also should allow us to put on longer studs uh, if these happen to need any wheel spacers. So really what I'm doing is I'm just focusing on one corner for now. I'm going to get that wheel all on. And once I confirm whether or not I need a wheel, uh, a spacer or longer wheel studs, then I can kind of figure out what I'm gonna do on the passenger side. Either way, I gotta get the passenger side on, but figured might as well just start with the driver side and start to figure out if I'm gonna need a wheel spacer or not, because this is definitely uh, bigger than what we came with stock here. All right, so the moment of truth, we got the wheel studs on. Uh, we're gonna just see if it fits and hope for the best here. And I will uh, put the lugs on too, uh, the lug nuts, just to make sure we have it tightened down so we can check that clearance. My biggest concern this is going to be clearance to the spring here. spacer all right it's a new day here our wheel spacers have arrived so what we're gonna do is just do a couple different test fits with a few different sizes here now I just grabbed some cheap ones that I could get overnight to make it uh, keep us moving here once I figure out what side I need I'm gonna purchase a nicer set of wheel spacers for a, kind of for long term here but again we get some wheel spacers we can figure it out now our goal is we're currently contacting the strut our wheel is actually contacting our spring and our strut in the back there. So we want to pull our wheel out just far enough uh, without sticking out of the fender there or as close as possible as we can. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit of fine tuning, but we'll give it a shot. All right, I'm going to be honest. I got super excited when those wheel spacers got in and immediately put them on. Now you can see if you look closely here, we got a 15 millimeter spacer. It's a little bit bigger than I'd like if I'm being honest. The tires are a little bit large. Now, these aren't the tires I'm going to use. These are dry rotted and everything, but they're perfect for test fitting. I think if we have a lower profile tire, uh, then we really shouldn't have too much of an issue here. We are pretty much flush, maybe just a little bit of poke, uh, but I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Once we get it down, we'll see how our fender clearance is. Uh, I might do the little ricer JDM trick here and maybe roll the fenders if necessary. But I'm going to try to keep these as stock looking as possible because really the whole goal here is sleeper. We want this to look stock with just a little slight touches uh, uh, for improvement in handling here. So again, these aren't the exact tires we're going to be using. These are 20550 tires. Uh, we're going to put on some 205417s. But we got the two front ones on here. It actually fits really, really good. Now I'm not going to do anything with the fenders or anything else here until I have the real tires on, the real rubber, because I might not even need to do anything to adjust that fitment. So I'm going to just put it on the ground to see how close we are as far as height's concerned. Uh, but we'll look at the back. All right, so I thought I wasn't going to be taking these brakes apart, but the adjuster is frozen solid on this side. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I have all the parts. I'm just going to rip it all apart here. We'll rebuild the brakes. I have the, uh, the new shoes. I have a hardware kit, so we'll just take it all apart. I'm gonna try to unfreeze my adjuster. If that doesn't work out for me, then I'm gonna have to get a new adjuster, but we'll try to disassemble and maybe rebuild it first before getting into that. Uh, but I'm gonna dive into just ripping this apart. I'll put the rotor on just, or I should say the drum on just as a test fit, uh, figure out what I need for spacers. And then in the meantime, I'll figure out if I need any extra hardware. Uh, for the brake rebuild on that. And then once I have this all figured out here on the other side, I am having a hard time with the axle nut. So I'll actually get all three wheels on. Uh, actually say all four back on. I'll put it on the ground. I'll break the axle nut on the other side uh, while it's on its own weight because that should make it a little bit easier.
Now we're gonna go ahead and try to get this wheel fitted on here. The drum isn't rebuilt or anything. We just have the drum in place here so we can go for fitment. Uh, we did get the adjuster kind of loosened up so I think that should be a solvable problem. Uh, so all things are good. We're gonna check here to see what kind of space we're gonna need. Now the big things in this setup is we need to make sure we're not touching the exhaust uh, in the back there. I have my muffler. And then other than that, it's just clearance kind of overall inner and outer of the fender there. So we'll go ahead and we'll pop this in and kind of hope for the best. Gotta be honest, I've been struggling with this axle nut for multiple days here. I couldn't get the right tool to do it. I literally exploded two breaker bars and then I had a terrible idea which worked out great. I have this massive crescent wrench that I got from when I used to work at Apex Tool Group. And I mean, this thing is a thick boy and I attached it to two uh, two of the handles for my jacks and broke that nut free. That's what we need to do so we can remove the drums. The other side I was able to do while jacked up in the air, this side has been fighting me the entire time. We got that axle nut broken free. Now we can rebuild the drums. I have my uh, spacers in, so we are pretty much ready to go here. All right, so honestly, things aren't going as smoothly as I would have liked here. Everything I read online was, yeah, I might need some spacers, but generally things are going to fit. Uh, in the front, I think we have everything pretty good. With the same 15 millimeter spacer in the rear, uh, we're contacting this bolt here in the back for our spring plate, as well as our bump stops. Uh, now, I saw a lot of people commenting about trimming these down. I think we can flip the bolt here so that we're looking at the bolt head rather than the nut. I'm gonna try those two things real quick to try to stick with the 15 millimeter spacer. If that doesn't work, we're already starting to uh, come out of the fender with the 15 millimeter. I don't want to go much more, uh, but I will if necessary. Yeah, it's a little bit of trial and error. Like I said, we'll start by fixing that little bolt location, and then we'll probably just honestly chop off this bump stop here because we're not really worried about bump stops uh, where we're going. So we'll give those both a shot. I'm going to start by just quick, quickly flipping that bolt. Uh, and then we'll work into that bump stop. Now the other thing we're fighting is we do have a larger tire than I planned. But nonetheless, it just seems like we're getting a little too close with all that stuff on the inside here. So we'll do a few things to try to uh, kind of optimize our situation here and see where we end up. All right, so it's a little hard to see because we're crammed in here, but we got the back wheel on with a little bit of spacer and it actually doesn't look too bad here. And I'm just kind of walking across my uh, F100 frame here. But we can see, and even with those giant eight and a half wheels and 250 rubber, we're actually not poke, poking out too bad. Now we will need to do a little fine tuning, uh, but I think that's something we can work around. Now the big advantage here is look at all that tire we have. So again, this is a 250. I'm probably gonna go to a smaller tire size, but we can see very well here. Look at all that meat. Now we're gonna be able to really apply this power to the road. And that's with the front and the rear Porsche wheels. So again, I think I'm gonna get a fender roller and try to do whatever I can to work these out. I really don't wanna put different fenders on the car. So I'm gonna to try to roll these before I jump into, uh, really before I jump into trying to maybe replace the fenders. Let's see if we can roll them out. I'm gonna lower the back a little bit too, which will actually give us a little more camber, which will also bring the tire a little more into that fender there. So that's really everything we have for this one there. As you can see, uh, we already have the wheel sent out for our new tires. Those should be coming back in the next day or so. Uh, and in our next video, what we'll do is we'll throw those wheels on with those high performance tires, roll the fenders as needed, and then take that bug out for a really fun spirited drive. 
Uh, so as always, thank you everyone for viewing. I hope you enjoyed the content. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more, and share with your friends. And hope to see you all again soon.